So I've had quite a few people asking about my CNC machine, sort of where it came from, how it's performing, things like that. I thought I'd just make a little video, kind of show you some of the features, let you know how I've been getting on with it, tell you a bit more about it. I thought it might be useful. I'm not by any means an expert on CNC stuff, um, either the process or the machines, but um, I'll try and share with you what I've learned from this machine and uh, how I've found it. So the company that I bought it from is called CMAX CNC. I'm not 100% sure if they're still going now because I haven't seen anything around with them kind of selling new machines and stuff like that. But the machine is a Blue Elephant machine from China. So I bought it through a UK agent and they did all the importing for me, delivered it direct to my door, set it up and did the training and everything like that. Um, so I believe you can buy these direct from Blue Elephant in China. Um, I'm not sure what the price is like but probably cheaper than it would be buying it through a UK agent. So I would say it's probably a sort of entry level machine really. Good enough for sort of professional use I would say but um, by no means the higher end of the market. It's uh, quite a compact machine really which is nice. A lot of the machines you'll find have a kind of standalone computer system which is alongside the machine and they take up quite a lot of space but with this you've basically got all the electrical just in these panels on the front. All of your uh, controllers and stuff are just in that panel there. And then your handheld controller is all that you've got remotely. So it's got quite a nice footprint really. It doesn't sort of fall much outside of that size, which is quite nice for the small kind of workshop sort of thing that I've got. It's not, uh, we've not got loads of space, so it's good in that respect. Uh, you've also got the vacuum pump down there for the vacuum hold down bed. So that's a little bit outside of its footprint, but uh, not too crazy. So the machine capacity wise is a 1325, so it will take 1300 mil wide and 2500 mil long. So pretty well set up for doing your sort of standard eight before sheets. Um, and that's a lot of what I've cut on it really. The bed is a sort of hybrid bed. So you've got these vacuum zones but also these T-slots as well, so you can use clamps to hold down stuff. I tend to use them if I'm doing solid timber because um, solid timber boards don't really tend to hold hardly at all on the vacuum. The vacuum's pretty much only usable for sort of MDF sheets, plywood sheets, things like that. So the vacuum bed system is in four zones, so you've got your main off and on valve there, you've got a vacuum pressure readout gauge, and then your four zones, so you can shut them off depending on what you're using, if you're using the whole bed or if you're using just a small portion of it. I've even done stuff before where I've kind of shut off zones as the machine's moving around different parts, so it um, gets a stronger hold down in the area that it's working in. So they basically shut off four of these at a time, and you can see they're separated in the middle there, just by a little gasket. Uh, the vacuum bed as a whole isn't too bad really. I tend to put an 18mm MDF spoil board on there and the vacuum system will pull evenly down through the spoil board and it works pretty well. What I've done before now is filled in these channels with just a bit of uh, neoprene to try and stop any leakage coming out through the, uh, through the vacuum because anywhere that you've got a leak is going to lose holding power. So I've, uh, I've filled them in before now and even sealed the edges of the MDF board so it just tends to pull right down through the top of the board and you get a pretty good hold actually, all in all. Uh, this is the vacuum pump that comes with it. It's a, a water driven pump so it's, um, it's got this tank here that you fill it with water and then the pump over the back that just pulls in the vacuum through that hose. It's okay but to be honest if I was going to upgrade anything that would probably be it. Functionally it's alright, it's got a pretty good hold down, but if you're running it for a long time you tend to get steam coming up out of that hole there and it's got this sort of like diesel-y smell to it as well so um, it's not very nice to have that running in the workshop for a particularly long time. So I'd uh, probably upgrade that to something different, more like a Becker style pump or something like that if that's possible. That would probably be the worst thing about the, the whole kit, I would say, would be the vacuum pump. But performance wise, the machine's always done me pretty well. I've used it now for about three years. The only thing I've ever had go wrong with it was uh, one of the belts on the Z-axis snapped. 
and it's probably my fault because I was manually zeroing a tool at the time and just drove it down into the workpiece a little bit too hard and broke the belt um, so the Z axis just dropped down um, but it's easy to, to replace that I just took the cover off the top swapped the belt out and uh, it was back in action so other than that it's all been good I don't use it a hell of a lot probably once to twice a week um, at most really so it's not a machine that's kind of running all day but I'll fire it up anyway and uh, show you some of the features on it So once the system's loaded up, you get this screen here and then I always just go all axis home and it just kind of sets everything from a nice starting point then. Okay, so then you can just manually drive the machine around. And you've got a couple of different modes for moving around sort of basic operations so if you press the mode button there you either get continuous which is on at the moment or step which will just do I think it's just 0.1 of a mil at a time so real kind of accurate movement it's handy when you're zero in X and Y and stuff like that then next you've got distance. Uh, this is quite handy if you're running off sort of tiled products or something like that and you've got to move and reset your X and Y and then move back to it again afterwards. That tends to be the sort of thing I use that for so you can just type in your distance. Uh, 150mm and then whichever direction you press the machine will move just a set amount. in that direction so uh, as I say if you need to offset your zero and then come back to where you were before that's quite a nice way of uh, not losing what you're doing when you're in continuous mode if you just press the button you can move by 0.1 of a mil at a time so that's quite nice and accurate or if you press and hold you can drive the machine at quite a good pace uh, there's various different things in here that you can set up, like the speed that it drives at um, when, you, when you're when you just sort of driving it manually like this. I think I've got this set to about 15 or 20 metres a minute. Um, as you can see it's a fairly decent speed for getting the machine out of the way and if you're changing boards and things like that. Um, it will run anything up to 25 meters a minute, I think, but it's probably pushing the machine a little bit to its limits, and uh, I th you know it's not really a good idea, I don't think, to uh, to kind of wear stuff out. So I find that's a nice speed to run at. Cutting-wise, I have cut up to sort of 20 meters a minute before now in plywood and things like that, where you really want to push compression cutters, but I tend to find the machines again a little bit on its limits, um, and for most of the stuff I do, I don't really need to cut that fast. Um, but it will do sort of full depth cuts in 18mm ply quite happily. The biggest problem normally is holding the, the workpiece down, uh, cutting at that sort of rate. As I say, it's not really sort of professional grade machine, it's pretty um, pretty lower end I would say from, the, from that sort of respect. So the extraction on the machine is quite good. Um, we've just got 100mm flex that sort of supported overhead to allow for a bit more travel and then that comes down through there the brushes are pretty burnt out now on uh, on this one so they could probably do a replacing but it picks up uh, most of what you're doing the only thing really is if you've got a particularly long cutter in there you'll find that those brushes don't come anywhere near the workpiece so uh, it tends to make a bit more of a mess then it's just an air-cooled spindle it goes up to 18,000 rpm and that's done everything that I ever needed it to do you can see the uh, manifold there for the oiling system and then around the back you've got your little oil tank there 
it's just on a timer, it counts down and then just purges the system every time it gets to zero, so that keeps all of your uh, slide running oiled and things like that. I actually dialed that down a bit because it was um, probably a little bit too full on. If you've got the machine turned on all day, you'd end up with oil sort of leaking out all over the place. So um, I just dialed that down. I think it sort of does it every two hours or something like that now. You've got your little uh, zero in plate for the tool. I don't know if you might have seen me use that in a couple of videos. Um, just kind of automatically zeroes your tool by touching down onto it. That's quite handy and tends to be more accurate than doing it manually by hand by just sort of scratching the surface uh, with the tool as I found so I just prefer that method. It's a pretty solid machine really uh, as you can see the cross member is pretty big on it it's all fairly chunky welded steel frame. You can see what it's like up underneath the bed there the vacuum system and the cross members I've never had any uh, noticeable issues with the machine flexing or anything like that. Perhaps nothing I do is quite that accurate on this. I tend to just do profile cut stuff really, just cutting out parts, as you might have seen in my, uh, my video for the boat building stuff, just cutting out boat parts and a little bit of uh, engraving for part marking. That's probably one of the most accurate things I've ever done on this machine, so um, it's a little oak model of Mount Everest. I uh, made it really just to have a little bit of a play with 3D carving and see exactly what the machine could do. Um, and it did that in quite a few hours actually, I can't remember how long it took in total, but um, let me see, it means it's, it's quite a capable machine of doing really detailed stuff. Uh, so that was all cut from a solid block of oak. Yeah, all in all, it's been a good machine for everything that I've ever needed to do on it. I'll just say the only thing that I really thought with the machine was uh, the vacuum pump wasn't particularly good, but uh, that's easily upgraded either at the time when you buy or you know further down the line, which I may well get around to doing at some stage. Uh, File-wise, this just runs on uh, .tap files, which I think are a Mac 3 format. Correct me on that if I'm wrong, but. Uh, I tend to either export those from Fusion or ArtCam, that's the two software packages that I use for doing various different programs. And they just go onto a USB stick and then you can just put that in the little handheld controller there. And when it comes to running a file, you just go run, pause, delete, UDisk file, and then that will kind of list everything that you've got on your uh, USB there and it's just a case of clicking run and you set your your work speed so that's your cutting speed and then your fast speed is sort of transitioning between cutting parts and things like that and then you've got your scale so as it's running you can kind of dial up and down so uh, if you set that to 1 it will run obviously at 100% of your work speed dial it down to 0.6 as it is and it will run at 60% uh, of it Okay, so I hope that was a bit of a useful insight into the machine. If anybody's looking to get one, I hope it's helped them out a bit. If I've missed anything or if there's anything that you wanted to know that I haven't covered, uh, just pop it in the comments below and I'll try and answer any questions I've got. As I say, I'm not really an expert on machines, but um, hopefully I can kind of share how this one's been for me um, and hopefully it was useful. Okay, catch you next time.